Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is practice finding missing angles when given a pair of parallel lines being intersected by transversals. And what we're going to do to find those missing angle measures is we're going to take advantage of the fact that supplementary angles are 180 degrees and also take advantage of the fact that alternating interior angles are congruent to each other. And we're also going to take advantage of the fact that the three angles of any triangle will always have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this problem, it says that line segment AB and line segment CD are parallel to each other. And we have to find the measures of angle AFB, angle ABF, and angle BAF. So angle AFB is located right here. So we start with A, then go to F, and then to B. It is the middle letter that is closest to the angle in question. So this is AFB. And we have to find the measure of angle ABF, which is this angle right here. And then we have to find the measure of angle BAF, which is right here. So essentially, we are finding the angle measures of the three angles of this triangle right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is just examine what details are given in the problem because it is always what is given that we use as clues to figure out what we need to know. So what is given is that line segment CD, which is right here, and AB are parallel to each other. And we can see that we have two transversals that cross our parallel lines. It is also given that this angle right here has a measure of 154 degrees, and this angle measure right here has an angle measure of 34 degrees. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this given angle here, which is 154 degrees, and I'm going to find this angle. And the reason I'm going to start here is because I can visually see that this small angle right here, this little acute angle, and this angle here can be pieced together to form half of a circle. And we know that an entire circle is composed of 360 degrees, and half of a circle is equal to 180 degrees. So this small angle right here, is a supplement to this angle. Remember, supplementary angles are two angles that have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So what I can do is just take 154 and subtract it from 180 to find the angle measure of this angle right here, which ends up being 26 degrees. So this angle right here is 26 degrees. Now, this angle that is given is 34 degrees. And this angle we figured was 26 degrees. Now, something else that we should be aware of is that if we were to add the three angles of any triangle, they have a sum of 180 degrees. So if we took this 26 degree angle and added it to this 34 degree angle, whatever angle this is when added to these two angles would have a sum of 180 degrees. Now the sum of these two angles is 60 and the only thing we can add to 60 to make 180 would be 120. Or what we could have done is just taken 180 and subtract 60 and that would leave us with 120 degrees. So now we know that this angle right here has an angle measure of 120 degrees. Now we can see that this transversal here and this transversal here intersects at this point right here, at point F. And what we have is something called vertical angles. Whenever you have any two lines that intersect each other, the angles that are across from each other are congruent to each other. And those angles are called vertical angles. So if this angle here is 120, this angle right here is also 120. All right, what we're going to do next is we are going to find the angle measure of this angle right here and this angle right here by taking advantage of the rules of alternate interior angles. And here's what alternate interior angles are. So whenever you have a transversal that intersects a pair of parallel lines, if you take a look at an angle on one side of that transversal and an angle on the opposite side of that transversal, we would say that those angles are on alternate sides of that transversal. Notice that this angle right here is above that transversal, and this angle here is below that transversal. Yet they still lie somewhere in the middle of our parallel lines. So we would say that they are located on the interior of those parallel lines. So 
These angles that I just highlighted are called alternate interior angles. And when it comes to alternate interior angles, they are always going to be congruent to each other. So because this angle is 26 degrees, this angle right here is also 26 degrees. We also have another set of alternate interior angles along this transversal. We can see that this angle right here is located above our transversal, and this angle here is located below our transversal, or alternate sides of our transversal. Yet they still lie on the interior of our parallel lines. So because this is 34 degrees, this alternate interior angle is also 34 degrees. So the angle measure of AFB, which is right here, is 120 degrees. The measure of angle ABF, which is right here, is 34 degrees. And the measure of angle BAF, which is right here, is 26 degrees. And another thing that we should do to verify our results is just add those three angles together because they should always have a sum of 180 degrees. However, we already did that with the three angles of this triangle. Now notice that the three angles of this triangle were identical in measure to the angles of this triangle. Now the reason that this triangle and this triangle share three congruent angles is because whenever you have a set of parallel lines that are intersected by two transversals and create a set of triangles, those two triangles are similar to each other. Now, they are not congruent to each other. They are similar, meaning they have the same shape, but not the same size. However, similar figures will always maintain congruent angles. So we're going to take a quick look at this, because if you can identify that you have similar triangles in the future, this will allow you to identify unknown angles much more quickly. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking a look at this triangle right here. And we're going to take that triangle and we're going to rotate it about point F 180 degrees. Now, what we should notice right away is that this angle right here, before we rotate it, matches up with this angle down here. These angles are vertical angles and they are going to be congruent to each other. So notice that this angle right here is wedged perfectly up in that angle right there. If I were to take this triangle and drag it along this corner right here, notice it would match up with that angle perfectly, meaning they have the same angle measure. Now we can see our little angle symbol right here, which was originally by this 34 degrees. So after we rotated, this angle ended up being wedged right here along with this angle. And of course, this angle right here, which was 26 degrees, is now right here, and if we drag this triangle, it fits perfectly along angle BAF right here. So we can see that the three angle measures are identical to each other, meaning that we have a set of similar triangles. So in the future, if you see a set of parallel lines intersected by two transversals that create two triangles, those two triangles are going to be similar to each other. So if you know the measures of those three angles of that triangle, and you automatically know the angle measures of the other triangle. And notice that the two angles that are touching each other or right across from each other at that point are going to be congruent because they are vertical angles. And the ones that are kind of kitty corner from each other or diagonal are alternate interior angles, and they will be congruent to each other as well. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.